from brutal offshore drilling platforms all the way to the homeowner and hobbyist, Lincoln Electric's 125 years of experience provides the quality you need. The Newfoundland Hobbyist is sponsored by Lincoln Electric. Whether your project vehicle is brand new or 50 years old, Napa will have the parts and tools you need to get the job done. The Newfoundland Hobbyist is sponsored by Napa Auto Parts. No hesitation. Welcome back to another episode of the Newfoundland Hobbyist. I really appreciate having you back here in my workshop. In the last few episodes, we were working on a set of fine woodworking chisels. We were working on building a tool for woodworking. Well, today we're actually going to do the woodworking. I don't think we're going to get to put those chisels to use, but we do have some beautiful, beautiful historical pieces, some gorgeous hand tools here that we're going to be using to build something special, and that is a picture frame. Now, if you've been following the Newfoundland Hobbyist for the past few seasons, you'll know or you'll recall that I have a beautiful selection of hand tools. I, I worked and collected for a long time, um, uh, scouring the classifieds and eBay and antique shops across the island and, and even uh, in other provinces. I have a plane here we'll talk about later that I picked up in Hamilton, Ontario when I was visiting there. But I have a beautiful selection. Today we're going to be building that picture frame using only hand tools. Now this project is going to be special to me for a couple of different reasons. First off, we get to use our precious hand tools, and I don't get to use them often anymore. There was a time when I didn't own any power tools, and the only work that I did was with hand tools, and that just doesn't happen so much anymore. Now the next reason I'm really excited about this project is because of what we're making. That is a picture frame. Well, that might be an interesting craft project, and, and, uh, and I am excited to learn how to build one, it's special to me because my grandfather knows where they, Pop knows where they, actually worked as a craftsman building picture frames in his younger years. And when he retired, in his uh, retirement days, in his golden years, he actually got back to making those picture frames. And uh, he's no longer with us now. He passed away. But this, this project kind of ties to him in that special way. To take this even further, this piece of pine we have here, this beautiful piece of pine, actually came from a headboard that belonged to my grandfather Noseworthy. So this project is really a, an homage to him. I'm going to start off with a number four. This is a beautiful, beautiful footprint plane here made in England. I'll make a couple passes here to set my depth and to get an idea of which way the grain is running. Isn't that beautiful? How precious is that? What nice fire starters, huh? The next thing we're going to do is clamp this board horizontally. Now this is a difficult thing to do if you don't have a woodworking bench. I have a soft jawed woodworking vise here and it has something called a bench dog. This allows a stem to protrude up above your bench surface that can hold your material this way. Now in order for that horizontal push to be useful to you, you need an anchor point on your bench or something to push up against. Now we're going to get out one of my favorite planes and that is the record number 44. This is a little plow plane and boy is it a beautiful, beautiful little plane. This is the oldest plane I have and this plane comes with a set of cutters like you see here a couple dowels, two sets of dowels, short and long, and this beautiful fence here. Look at all the casting on this. Now this face right here is going to be the face you're going to see on this picture frame. So we're going to cut some decorative grooves in that later, and we're going to rip this at some point as well. What we're going to do right now 
is cut our groove in here because we're not going to want to score up the, that decorative face when we get it done. So we're going to cut a groove in here right now and that will be our insert for our glass and um, our picture and our backing board, whatever we put in there later. So we have to judge the depth of frame we want and then choose a cutter to mill a groove in here. And this is this is a very exciting job, a job that's perfect for a plow plane like this. Okay, I've chosen this cutter. Let's get the plane set up. You know, something really beautiful about these old tools. For one, there there's a, a great element of safety there because you have no ripping engines or, or blades turning at 12,000 RPM. They're just simple little cutters. Um, so, so they're very safe for beginner woodworkers or people that aren't familiar with tools. The worst case, you'll dice a finger or, or something like that. You just want to be careful. But those things are easy to be careful of. And as long as you practice proper, proper usage of the tool, you're never actually really close to the blade. Okay, let's install our fence here. We're going to install it on this side. We can set our depth inward. Whether I'm in the workshop or out on the trails, Wild Med Kits provides me with the equipment I need to stay prepared. The Newfoundland Hobbyist is sponsored by wildmedkits.ca. As a custom knife maker and craftsman, sharpening has become a part of my daily routine. I use paulsfinest.com for all of my sharpening equipment. The Newfoundland Hobbyist is sponsored by Paul's Finest. to find a more satisfying task than this. We're riding on our foot there all the way along now, which is our depth stop. So we've reached a perfectly even depth all the way along. Okay, so we know this is the front of the frame, the back of the frame, the inside towards the center point of the picture, and the outside edge. We want to make note of that when we're doing decorative work because of course we know pictures, picture frames usually taper out in some way. If you have some groove, groove, grooving or anything like that, usually in here is a little thinner and it tapers into the picture. So the bulkier edge out here, little thinner in there. Now the next plane we're going to use is a Stanley combination plane. This is probably the most valuable tool in my collection. Um, one of the ones I was most excited to get. Actually not my favorite to use because it's, it's pretty complex, a lot of adjustments on it, and, and you have to get it right, but it is an incredible tool. And for its day, it was just uh, a marvel. So here is the combination plane. This was actually pretty rough when I got it, but I did a fair amount of restoration work on it. And just look at how complex this is. We've got a fence here with hardwood. And although we do have this dowel system, just like on the, the older record plane there, which is a macro adjustment, this plane also has a threaded micro adjustment here. So you can get, get it set roughly where you want the fence, where you want the cut, and then you can dial it in closely with this micro adjustment. Isn't that something? Now the record, also beautifully simple. Um, this one has a little more of the creature comforts on a little bit more modern plane. So while the, the record, you need to use a screwdriver. Right here you have a thumb wheel. So it's very easy to adjust the depth. And uh, right here, remember on that record we have that retention screw to push in. This right here 
a big wing nut, and this is a cam style system. So as we tighten down, this is wedged. As we tighten down here, this big cross pin draws in, wedges down and in on the blade. So it'll pull it into the chassis, into itself, and keep downward pressure. So instead of having a device for keeping it in and a device for tensioning like on the record, we have one thumb wheel here that does it all. So this would have been pure luxury at the time, pure luxury. Now that luxurious combination plane also had a massive array of different cutters. And this is the cutter we'll choose to use today. This next plane we're going to use, this is a record, number 778. Can you see that stamping in there? This is probably the newest of the, the ones we've used so far, but a beautiful, beautiful plow plane. I have the plane set to go take down this edge here. Remember our, you know, frames usually taper in a little bit. A little thicker on the outside, a little thinner inside. So we want to remove a little material. And how do you remove just the edge? And how do you get so close to that right there? Well, this is the perfect plane for that. Now, I think this will be the last decorative cut, and that is with the plow plane, or the combination plane, sorry. and that very small cutter, a small little convex cutter. We need to be very precise here now. We don't have a lot of room remaining. Gotta get this right. I'm not sure how clearly you can see all those shapes, but remember, this is the inside, so the picture will be here face on to you. And we have a flat dipping down. Then we have a beautiful convex here, turned out very good. A little step, another groove, then another convex. So a different size, one of these right here. For the beginner and advanced sharpener, the Edge Pro Sharpening System makes it easier for you to get razor sharp edges every time. The Newfoundland Hobbyist is sponsored by Edge Pro Inc. Simmons Tire supplies all the wheels, tires, and accessories you need for everything from ATVs and cars to heavy equipment and machinery. The Newfoundland Hobbyist is sponsored by Simmons Tire. I'm going to go ahead and 45 chamfer that inside edge now. Just to round it in a little bit. Hand saws are really awesome. You could make a hobby just out of collecting hand saws alone. This is an oiler here that you just roll up a rag, stuff it down in a tin, keep it saturated with oil. Okay, we need to do a good job with this cut, but we have a nice surface to back onto. So now you're probably getting a better understanding. Here's our frame. There's that notch we cut before and we can just rip right down up against this surface. And Thank <laughs> you. 
small block plane now to take that shellac off the, the outside edge and just crisp it up a little bit. What a beautiful little plane this is. A Stanley nine and a quarter. It's a very stout little plane which makes it very precise. It's uh, just a, a mass of iron. A fine adjustment here. You can really get precise with it. And it's just, uh, in terms of a little block plane, it's just a beautiful, beautiful tool. Certainly tempting to take this over to the uh, the chop saw there with my fine blade and, and have it done in a, in a few seconds very precisely, but I'm going to do it with this Zona 24 tooth per inch here. Very fine tooth. We need an accurate cut, so this is a very paper thin blade as well. I've marked my 45. Despite being a, a fine blade, should cut quite quickly in this soft pine. And that's our first 45. Woodworking is just such a phenomenal hobby and one of the beautiful things about it is that you can do so much with so little. The, this small selection of tools and I have a beautiful selection of tools here but there's not a lot. But this small selection of tools here it are, is taking care of this entire project and the, and the even better thing about it is that everything I'm doing here is quiet is in a small space, there's no dust, very little noise. So you can do it even if you're in a little apartment and all you have is a spare bedroom. In fact, I did that for years while I was in university. That's when I started building my hand tool, my wood hand tool collection for that very reason. And I did woodworking in a, in a spare bedroom. Come see how fine the cut is produced by this saw. A cut like this, this type of work, fine work like this, is exactly what this saw was designed for. But this right here, what looks like a pencil mark, is actually my saw curve, <laughs> which is quite incredible. It actually, uh, it's, I, it's a little bit smaller of a curve than what my mechanical pencil mark produces. Let's just hope we've kept everything nice and square and accurate. I think this might be a nice project for one of our chisels here. Need to take off a little bit of material on the inside. I don't want to squish my
whole swath of power tools, a router, a miter saw, a, a table saw, all those tools. Could we have done this project faster? Absolutely. Probably a quarter of the time. Could we have done a better job? Probably. There's a degree of automation when you use those tools that just uh, help your cuts stay square. You're not, you're not working a saw. You're letting it sit on a flat table against the fence. So it is different and you, we could have probably got better results. But that wouldn't have been nearly as fun. In addition to the fun factor, those tools are dangerous. They present a lot more danger to the user than hand tools, where there are no motors, where everything's happening in slow motion. Hand tools are just much safer. In addition to that, hand tools are much quieter, less expensive. You could do them. This this is a beautiful project. You could do this day in, day out in a little spare bedroom or living room of a retirement cottage. Might it make a little little mess in your cottage that you gotta sweep up? A few wood shavings, a little bit of sawdust around? Sure, but it allows you to keep keep working and keep making beautiful objects. I'd say it's worth a little bit of mess. I figured there's about no place here in the shop I would rather be than up next to those chainsaws. Boy, he sure loved it in the woods and <laughs> loved his saw. Thanks for, so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this episode. I really enjoyed this project. I enjoyed getting to break the hand tools back out again. It just woodworking is a beautiful hobby. And with hand tools, it's just so much more accessible and an enjoyable experience. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. I have to give a big shout out to my sponsors. If you can support them, please do, because they really do help make this show possible. As always, make sure you tune in next week to the Newfoundland Hobbyist.